Here are some of the big stories the Financial Times will be watching in the week ahead. Apple launches new iPhones and the latest version of the Apple Watch. European Commission President Jean-Claude Juncker delivers his final State of the Union address. And there's a meeting of the Bank of England's Monetary Policy Committee. First to Apple, which is expected to unveil a trio of new iPhones and a new version of its smartwatch on Wednesday. It's the second big launch event to be held at Apple's new headquarters. New iPads and Macs could also be on show at Apple Park, as it looks to draw customers deeper into its family of products. Marketing images for the iPhone XS and the fourth generation Apple Watch have already been leaked online. Last year's product launch was a blockbuster. The iPhone X was long anticipated and expectations were high that it would kick off a super cycle of sales. So how will this year's event compare? This time around, I think expectations are a little bit more muted, a little bit more rational, perhaps. Uh, we're not expecting such a radical jump forward in the design of the product, although the Face ID system and the ditching of the home button is likely to be rolled out right across uh, the iPhone product range. Um, but what I do think investors have to look forward to is the uh, continuation of the most important part of the iPhone revenue story over the last year, which is price increases. Uh, I think that the most uh, the biggest screen version of the iPhone that will come out next week could cost uh, more than the $1,000 entry point that we saw for the iPhone X a year ago, and that's very important to maintaining the growth that has propelled Apple to become the world's first trillion dollar company. And now to Strasbourg, where Jean-Claude Juncker delivers his final State of the European Union speech. Mr Juncker will lay out the Commission's policy priorities for the remainder of the political cycle, which ends up with the European Parliament's elections in May 2019. The contents of the speech are always a tightly guarded secret, but officials say it will focus on migration, security and foreign policy. Mr Juncker will formally announce plans allowing EU governments the freedom to decide their own time zone by abolishing clock changes. The Commission is also set to unveil regulation forcing internet giants like YouTube and Facebook to remove terrorist content within an hour of detection. Juncker is also expected to warn against voters succumbing to foreign interference that threaten to stoke populist and anti-EU sentiment ahead of next May's vote. Mr Juncker will no doubt lay out his plans for the year. but. People will use this also as an opportunity to judge his record and his legacy. This has not been a badly run commission and there have been some star performers like Margarita Vesteya, the European Competition Commissioner, who's taken on the American tech giants, making Europe the real world leader in, in tech regulation. But overall, the climate in Europe has deteriorated very sharply. And if the Commission is the guardian of the EU treaties and European integration. It's been a pretty poor time with Brexit, with the rise of populist nationalists across Europe, uh, particularly in the East, um, and at a time when uh, Europe's closest ally, the United States, seems determined to unpick the global order. And finally, to UK monetary policy. And after last month's excitement when the Bank of England raised interest rates above 0.5% for the first time since the financial crisis, this week's meeting of the central bank is set to be a more sedate affair. Expectations that interest rates will be raised this week, or indeed at any time before the UK leaves the European Union, are very low. The minutes of the meeting, published alongside the decision, should reveal whether the economy has developed along the lines of the central bank forecast in its August inflation report. Governor Mark Carney won't be giving a press conference, but on Friday he'll deliver a lecture at the Irish Central Bank in Dublin, where he'll take questions about his future and the future of the UK economy. Expectations for any change in interest rates at the Bank of England's meeting on Thursday are at rock bottom, as markets expect there will be no move until after Britain has left the European Union in March of next year. Perhaps the most significant event for observers of the Bank of England this week is Mark Carney's lecture on Friday in Dublin. That's significant because last week it was announced that Theresa May had given him her backing to remain in office until 2020. While that's likely to mean little for monetary policy, markets will welcome it. Mark Carney's announcement that he provided as much liquidity as needed in the aftermath of the Brexit vote helped keep things calm. He will reassure markets that whatever turmoil is going on in Westminster and Brussels, there will be a familiar face in Threadneedle Street. And that's what the week ahead looks like from the Financial Times in London. See you again next time.